Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for a learning and growing webinar on reality TV as a teaching tool strategies for enhancing theoretical application and fostering critical thinking skills. Our presenter today is Monica Radu of Southeast Missouri State University. My name is Sidra and I'll be your moderator today for Hawks Learning. We will have a live Q&A session after the presentation, so please enter any questions you have into the Q&A module as we go and we'll be sure to answer them at the end. I'll now hand it over to our presenter. All right, I think I've got my screen shared here. Oops. Oh, sorry, technical difficulties, of course. So talking about reality TV. So it has emerged as this, sharing screen, okay. It's, it's emerged as this powerful educational tool because it offers unique opportunities to enhance theoretical application and to really help students foster critical thinking skills. So you know, when we think about reality TV, you know, we dismiss it as just mere entertainment and maybe not even good entertainment. Um, but it really holds a significant place in sociological study. So I'm a sociologist, but I think a lot of the things that I'll talk about today um, would be very applicable in any social science course. Um, so in this presentation, I'll explore why reality TV is a valuable subject for sociologists and other social science disciplines, um, particularly in teaching students the insights it offers and how it can better help us better understand um, interpersonal dynamics. So by examining reality TV through an academic lens, we can uncover profound insights into society and the complex ways in which individuals navigate social norms and structures um, within the confines of the screen. So I will also argue in the presentation that reality TV serves as a cultural mirror um, reflecting and sometimes reframing societal values, attitudes, and beliefs. By analyzing these representations, we can teach students to examine underlying power dynamics, inequalities, and cultural trends that shape both the content and reception of reality TV. All right, so reality TV holds this significant um, importance from a global perspective. Um, due to the way that it can reflect and shape cultural attitudes, social dynamics, and global interconnectedness. So we have formats like international versions, we have co-productions and adaptations. Um, reality TV franchises um, really transcend geographical boundaries. These shows often feature contestants, challenges and themes that reflect diverse cultural backgrounds. Um, which can help foster cross-cultural understanding and dialogue. Social media platforms amplify this interconnectedness, um, allowing audiences worldwide to engage and react to reality TV in real time, um, creating a global community of viewers um, who share experiences and perceptions regardless of their geographic location. So this is something kind of new when we're thinking about reality TV. Um, when reality TV first came out, you know, we were, you know, passive consumers, right? We just watch them. Wow, that's crazy. Talk to your family and friends about it. Um, but now we're seeing in real time how other people are reacting to the things that we're watching on TV through social media. Um, so reality TV reflects these global trends, values, and social issues. Um, and they even address uni universal concerns such as poverty, discrimination, and mental health within various cultural contexts. So by showcasing underrepresented voices and marginalized communities, reality TV promotes inclusivity and it can challenge stereotypes, um, which can contribute to greater representation and social change on a global scale. For example, Queer Eye um, follows the Fab Five as they provide lifestyle makeovers to individuals from diverse backgrounds, including individuals in the LGBTQ plus community, people of color, and people from different socioeconomic background. The show emphasizes acceptance, self-love, and diversity, um, and challenges stereotypes related to gender, sexuality, and physical appearance. 
Additionally, Born This Way is a documentary style reality series, which follows a group of young adults with Down syndrome as they navigate relationships, careers, and daily life. Born This Way offers um, such a positive portrayal of individuals with disabilities, which helps challenge stereotypes and highlights their abilities, aspirations, and contributions to society. So reality TV celebrities and influence and influencers you know, have global influence. Um, they shape trends, consumer behaviors, and social movements um, across borders. So through the study of reality TV's impact on global audiences, sociologists can gain insights into the mechanisms of cultural diffusion, media influence, and celebrity culture. So in essence, reality TV offers this lens through which to explore these diverse cultures, social dynamics, and interconnectedness. Um, so we can really you know, take this global perspective which I found can be really helpful, particularly in introductory classes, like you know, introduction to sociology. So through the analysis of reality TV content, students can explore and apply sociological frameworks um, to understand social phenomenon, relationships, and dynamics depicted on the screen. Additionally, reality TV offers diverse narratives and scenarios that reflect the complexities of society allowing students to engage with real life situations and critically examine the underlying social structures and processes at play. For example, reality TV um, might portray issues such as social inequality, race relations, deviance, and the construction of identity. By analyzing these themes through a sociological lens, students can gain insights into how these concepts are manifesting in everyday life and how they are represented and reinforced in popular culture. When viewers engage with reality TV, it may appear to be just a form of casual entertainment. So I'm always reassuring my family that I'm doing you know, work when I'm watching reality TV. Um, however, upon closer examination, you know, it's important to think about how reality TV can serve as this window into the dynamics of human behavior and structures. So these narratives depicted in these shows offer really valuable insights into the functioning of our social world. So by critically analyzing the relationships, maybe conflicts and cultural representations presented on the screen, we can deepen our understanding of societal norms and processes. So in essence, you know, reality TV, you know, is so much more than just entertainment because it becomes this medium how that we can use to, you know, teach and help students learn about sociology or, you know, various other disciplines. So I'm going to talk a little bit about one specific concept in sociology, and that's the sociological imagination. So it's a, a tool that encourages individuals to contextualize personal experiences with broader social con contexts. So when applied to reality TV, this perspective helps us um, transcend the surface level narratives presented on the screen and really examine the underlying social dynamics that are at play. For example, consider it a reality TV show centered around a group of individuals competing for a cash prize. You know, there's a million of these shows. Um, so through the lens of the sociological imagination, we can recognize that the participants' behaviors and interactions are shaped not only by their you know, individual personalities, but also these broader societal norms um, focused on competition, success, and wealth accumulation. Similarly, in shows exploring themes like romance or family dynamics, the sociological imagination allows us to understand how cultural expectations, gender roles, and media influences contribute to the portrayal of relationships in interpersonal conflicts. So again, the sociological imagination in the context of reality TV is allowing is, you know, or helping our students recognize these um, connections between personal struggles of participants and broader social issues. Um, can consider a reality show where um, contestants are maybe competing for a job opportunity. Through the sociological imagination, viewers um, may realize um, that the challenges faced by these contestants, such as lack of education, lack of access to resources, you know, these aren't just personal issues, they're often rooted in larger economic trends and structural inequalities. 
So by critically examining the social structures depicted on reality TV, such as um, the distribution of wealth and opportunities, students can you know, identify and challenge you know, systems of power and oppression um, perpetrated by these shows. And what can we learn from reality um, dating TV shows, right? Okay, so reality dating shows um, offer a glimpse into modern romance, right? Um, and societal expectations surrounding intimate partnerships. So these shows often follow a group of people who are you know, looking for love and companionship, um, navigating this you know, structured environment that's you know, provided by the show, um, which is somehow designed to foster these romantic connections. So one of the most iconic shows, The Bachelor, if you're not familiar, you know, follows the single bachelor as he dates multiple contestants with a goal of finding a potential spouse. The series explores themes such as love, competition, um, being emotionally vulnerable, um, while again also showcasing societal norms regarding um, gender roles in courtship rituals. So while all this might seem really superficial, um, reality dating shows provide this unique opportunity um, to study these dynamics of attraction, gender roles, and intimacy within this controlled setting. So for example, by analyzing the interactions um, between contestants, students can observe how social norms and cultural expectations shape the formation of romantic um, relationships. The portrayal of masculinity and femininity um, may influence contestants' behaviors and perceptions of attractiveness. The competition format of these shows introduces elements of power dynamics and the social hierarchy, shedding light on how individuals can assert agency and also negotiate their desires in this competitive um, environment. So again, reality TV shows are offering you know, these insights into broader societal trends and also attitudes towards love and relationships. And the TV show Love is Blind is a prime example of this. So in this unique dating experiment, um, and this is actually what I'm going over in my social deviance class right now. Um, so contestants are forming these connections and they ultimately you know, get engaged without ever seeing each other face to face. So the show explores the concepts of emotional con connection and compatibility as the primary factors in forming these lasting relationships. And obviously this challenges traditional notions of you know, forming these intimate relationships based on physical attraction. So by examining the narratives presented on these you know, dating shows, sociologists can um, look for these um, patterns in mate selection, um, preferences for certain personality traits and physical attributes, and even the role of social class and privilege in shaping romantic outcomes. Additionally, the diversity or the lack of diversity among contestants um, demonstrates issues of representation, inclusion, and perpetuation of stereotypes within the realm, you know, specifically of dating and romance. In many dating shows, um, they have received criticism because there's been a notable lack of representation of certain racial or ethnic groups, um, perpetuating stereotypes and limiting the diversity of romantic, excuse me, narratives portrayed on the screen. For example, consider a popular dating show where the majority of contestants are white, um, while individuals from racial minority groups are underrepresented and they're also um, put into um, these positions where they feel like they're maybe um, portraying stereotypical roles. So this lack of representation not only fails to reflect the diversity of contemporary society, but also reinforces um, narrow beauty standards and cultural biases, potentially alienating viewers who do not see themselves represented on the screen. So reality TV programs also provide um, a platform for discussing and exploring diverse social experiences and perspectives. So for example, there are many, many different shows um, that feature contestants or um, cast members from various backgrounds or marginalized communities, uh, which allows viewers to empathize with individuals facing different challenges within broader social con contexts. So for example, on the show Love and Hip Hop, um, it's a, you know, a large franchise, 
it follows the lives of individuals um, allowed in hip the hip hop music industry, including artists, producers, and their significant others. It predominantly features Black Americans and explores their uh, professional um, pursuits, personal relationships, and the intersection of fame and cultural identity. The show often um, highlights the complexities of romantic relationships, including fidelity, communication breakdowns, and the challenges of balancing um, personal and professional lives. Um, through the cast members' experiences, viewers witness the impact of relationship issues on mental health, self-esteem, and overall well-being. So again, these shows, there's, there's so many different things that um, we can use to unpack to really teach important concepts to students. As one of the longest running reality TV shows, um, Survivor brings together contestants from diverse backgrounds um, to compete in various challenges and strategic gameplay. So the series provides a platform for discussing topics such as teamwork, leadership, and social dynamics, while also highlighting resilience and adaptability of individuals in challenging situations. So TV shows like Survivor can promote empathy and understanding among, among viewers, fostering a sense of solidarity and collective responsibility for addressing social problems highlighted in you know, shows like these. MTV's TV show Teen Mom provides a very compelling platform um, for teaching about teenage pregnancies and the challenges associated with it. So the show follows the lives of teenage mothers as they navigate the complexities of parenthood, relationships, and personal development. Um, so by incorporating the show Teen Mom into discussions about teenage pregnancy, um, you know, educators can um, address a range of different themes, um, including um, acceptance of varying family forms and structures, um, extended family support net networks, and um, how these different things shape the experiences of teenage mothers and their children. So this exploration um, underscores the importance of recognizing and respecting the diversity of family dynamics within society. Teen Mom provides insights into social, emotional, and economic challenges faced by teenage parents. So through the experiences of the show's participants, students can explore, you know, issues surrounding financial instability, limited access um, to education and employment opportunities, and the strain of, you know, pregnancy and parenthood on interpersonal relationships. These discussions um, encourage students to really critically analyze the structural inequalities and systemic barriers that contribute to the perpetration of teenage pregnancy and its many you know, challenges. Additionally, Teen Mom um, in my classes has prompted discussions about the intersection of race and ethnicity, social class and gender in the experiences of teenage parents. Um, students can examine how social class, racial discrimination and gender expectations um, influence access to resources, social networks and opportunities for teenage mothers and fathers. This intersectional analysis um, deepens students' understanding of the complex social forces that shape the lived realities of individuals and their families affected by teenage pregnancy. Teen Mom also provides a platform for discussing the role of media representation in shaping you know, society's perceptions of teenage pregnancy and parenthood. So students can analyze you know, how the show portrays teenage mothers and their families and the broader societal um, attitudes towards teenage pregnancy. So this critical examination encourages students to question um, you know, these different stereotypes, challenge stigmas associated with teenage pregnancy, and engage in really constructive conversations about teen parenthood um, within communities. So also, um, you know, of course, I think that this could be applied to, to many different disciplines, but within sociology, um, you know, sociologists can analyze reality TV through the lenses of different sociological theories. So I picked the three theories um, that are typically included like in an introductory sociology textbook, and that's structural functionalism, conflict theory, and symbolic interactionism. So we can think about structural functionalism. 
which views society as this complex system comprised of these, you know, interconnected parts with each part serving a specific function, which is needed to maintain um, social stability. So in the context of reality TV, we might examine how um, shows reflect and reinforce societal norms, values, and roles. Conflict theory, on the other hand, emphasizes the role of power dynamics and inequality in shaping social structures. So with students, you know, we can have them apply this theory to reality TV to scrutinize the portrayal of conflicts and competition within the shows, as well as how these narratives um, perpetuate or challenge existing power dynamics in society. And then symbolic interactionism focuses on subjective meanings attached to symbols and interactions in social life. So with our students, we could explore how reality TV constructs and shapes social identities, relationships, and meanings through the um, interactions and narratives presented on the screen. Additionally, we could take it a step further even and examine how audiences interpret and respond to these representations. So this is kind of when social media can come in. So how, how are the audiences understanding what we're being shown on TV and how are people talking about these things on social media? And then there's so many, I just picked a few um, other key concepts and ideas that can be applied um, to reality TV, or we can use reality TV to better teach our students about these ideas and concepts. And one of them is toxic masculinity, which refers to a set of cultural norms and expectations um, surrounding masculinity that are harmful to um, men and all genders and society as a whole. So these norms often promote behaviors and attitudes that prioritize traits such as dominance, aggression, um, emotional repression, and um, just the lack of any sort of um, you know, vulnerability. So toxic masculinity perpetuates the idea that men must conform to rigid stereotypes of strength um, and discourage expressions of um, emotions, sensitivity, or perceived weakness. So exploring toxic masculinity through Jersey Shore can be a powerful educational tool. Um, throughout the series, um, viewers witness this, um, this culture of hypermasculinity, um, where traits such as aggression, dominance, and promiscuity are celebrated. Um, one of the most striking manifestations of toxic masculinity in Jersey Shore is the means of asserting dominance in resolving disputes. Um, there's this constant emphasis of hooking up and bringing home girls, which reinforces the notion um, that sexual conquests are a marker of masculinity and social status. The male cast members of Jersey Shore often equated you know, a successful night out um, at the nightclub with the ability to bring a woman home. So in the context of the show, um, the notion of success became intertwined with the male cast member members' ability to engage in sexual activity with a woman. Um, this mindset reflects a broader cultural expectation that equates masculinity with sexual con conquest and validates men based on their ability to attract and seduce women. Also, gender inequality and sexual double standards are deeply ingrained um, within society, and we can see these concepts really come to life throughout um, Jersey Shore. Um, so... You know, gender inequality and double standards are very evident in the portrayal of female cast members, um, highlighting and dis these disparities in societal expectations and treatment based on gender. So throughout the, the series, the female cast members face judgment and this harsh criticism um, for behaviors that are celebrated among the male cast members. Um, you know, one prominent example of gender inequality on Jersey Shore is the policing of women's sexuality and behavior. Female cast members were you know, subjected to harsh scrutiny and moral judgments for engaging, engaging in casual sex or expressing their sexuality openly. While again, these, the men, the male cast members are praised for these similar behaviors. So this double standard reflects broader societal attitudes and, and it dictates that um, these acceptable forms of expression are based on gender, reinforcing traditional notions of masculinity and femininity. So at times, you know, it might be hard to get your students excited about something you're teaching about, um, especially I feel like in an introductory course, because students feel like 
you have to learn or memorize all of these concepts and theories. You know, it can just seem really overwhelming and sometimes a little bit dry. So I found that, you know, picking a class theme like reality TV um, to use throughout the semester is a unique way to get students really excited and engaged in the course. I've also had students come to me like after class or email me and ask if I can incorporate their favorite reality TV show into the discussion. I mean, in any introductory you know, sociology course, typically there's a chapter on theories, research methods, a section devoted to inequality, and a section on various social institutions such as the family, the education system, and religion. So I have not found a topic yet that doesn't apply to some sort of reality show. So um, you know, using reality TV shows to teach you know, concepts and theories can offer lots of benefits. Um, the first is engagement. Um, reality TV shows are often highly engaging and entertaining for students. Um, they may already be familiar with these shows, making it easier um, for them to connect with the material and stay engaged in the learning process. Something that's interesting is, you know, as I find myself getting older, the students maybe aren't as interested in the reality TV shows that I'm interested in. But the great thing about reality TV is it's pretty quick to pick up on. Um, so, you know, I maybe had a, a semester where students didn't know anything about Jersey Shore. Well, I was able to get them caught up very quickly. And then they were, you know, deeply invested, you know, in the show and, and how to apply these, these concepts and theories. Also think about relevance. Reality TV um, often reflects contemporary social issues, norms, and trends. So by analyzing these shows through, you know, an academic lens, Excuse me, um, students can see how theoretical concepts apply to real life situations, making the material more relevant and relatable. Also, you know, Rally TV is offering these concrete examples. Um, so now we're seeing these examples of gender roles, social inequality, deviance, and socialization. So using examples, of course, you know, helps um, you know, take something that's abstract and make it more you know, understandable and relatable. Also, critical thinking. Um, reality TV shows often present, you know, kind of simplified narr narratives or stereotypes, but that provides students the opportunities to deconstruct them and critically analyze them. So this encourages students to think critically about media representations, societal norms, power dynamics, so many different things, um, and it really can help foster their analytical skills. Also, reality shows can spark lively discussions. Um, you know, if there's a show that's particularly popular, you know, one semester, that might just be a way to get a discussion started. Um, students might share their opinions, their interpretations of the show, and that can, can just be this, this roadmap, this path into um, a, a discussion um, about course material. Also, you know, it provides students the opportunity for cultural analysis. So again, reality TV reflects cultural values, beliefs, and practices, which offers insights into cultural context in you know, this world that we live in. Um, so analyzing these shows helps students understand how cultural, how culture, excuse me, shapes individuals' behaviors and perceptions. Also, reality TV um, features typically a diverse range of characters, um, which allows students to explore concepts from multiple perspectives. So um, this could encourage students to consider how factors such as race, social class, gender, and sexuality intersect to influence social dynamics. And also for students who may be unfamiliar um, with sociology or whatever discipline, um, Rally TV serves as this accessible entry point into the discipline. So by using um, familiar media as a starting point, um, educators can gradually introduce more um, complex, you know, theories, concepts, methods, um, making the material seem more approachable for beginners. So in conclusion, um, using reality TV as a teaching tool offers a lot of benefits to help enrich students' learning experiences. So by tapping into the familiar and engaging world of reality TV, um, you know, we as educators can effectively bridge this gap between these concepts and real life applications. 
um, from sparking these, you know, lively discussions to fostering critical thinking skills, um, you know, Reality TV does serve as a very important tool or resource in helping students grasp the complexities of society. By analyzing the dynamics portrayed in reality TV shows, students can gain this deeper understanding of cultural, social, and structural forces um, that shape our everyday lives. So as we continue to explore innovative approaches to teaching, um, you know, integrating reality TV into the curriculum you know, proves to be you know, one strategy that um, could empower students to become more informed, analytical, and socially conscious. And that is everything I have for you. And so I am um, open to questions. Close some of these things. Any questions you have, you can go ahead and drop them into the chat box or in the Q&A module. It looks like we do have one question so far. Um, can you provide examples of successful assignments or activities that have effectively leveraged reality TV to enhance student learning? Sure, so um, I've used lots of um, different TV shows and I, I also teach a wide range of classes. Um, so um, in one of my classes, Social Problems, there is a specific chapter on teenage pregnancy. And so we do use um, teen mom as, you know, that, that starting point to, you know, talk about um, is really teenage pregnancy a social problem it, or is it all these other things that are going on that makes um, teenage pregnancy a social problem? So um, I you know, show various clips of episodes in class and I have students um, kind of um, follow the specific um, rubric where then they're writing um, like a social media post um, about the TV show, but from a sociological perspective, analyzing is teenage pregnancy a social problem or is it not? Um, so that's just one uh, example. Okay, I mentioned I'm teaching a social deviance class and we're talking about cyber deviance. And so we're using the um, MTV TV show Catfish and also um, talking about the Netflix show Love is Blind that's on you know, TV right now. Um, you know, how important is um, personal appearance, physical appearance to you know, dating and um, forming these intimate relationships? So many examples and like I said I'm always open to, to students may have seen a show I haven't seen before or I have a colleague talking about a show um, so always you know new ideas every semester. Thank you. Um, one other question that we have is are there specific genres or formats of reality TV that are more conducive to enhancing theoretical application and fostering critical thinking skills? why I use Jersey Shore as an example a lot, because um, I think it's a, there's so much to unpack there, is because it's the, the same people. So it's following their growth over this series. Um, so we can look at you know something in season one versus something in season five. The TV show 10 years later came back on. So we can analyze um, what masculinity looked like in 2008 for these um, young men compared to what masculinity looks like um, now in 2024 um, and, and see the growth of the cast members and apply that to life course perspective. So th that's just one example of, of a show that I think has been really useful because we get to to follow these these cast members over time. Or some reality TV shows that's you know, different people every season or every year, which are still obviously very useful, um, but I've had a lot of you know, fun or success using those shows where we're, we're seeing the growth of the individuals over time. Thank you. And then one last question that we have is, what strategies do you recommend for facilitating discussions around sensitive or controversial topics depicted in reality TV program? Ming. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, 
I typically, um, students know what we're going to be talking about in class beforehand, um, you know, through the Canvas page, they know what the topic is. Um, and so that's just something that I kind of set the stage for at the beginning of the semester that, you know, you know there might be a, a trigger warning, um, you know, we do cover, you know, sensitive topics in various classes. So I always offer, um, you know, that there's just a topic that students feel uncomfortable being present in class, that they might have the opportunity to participate, um, you know, through Zoom or, you know, asynchronous, a, you know, in an asynchronous format through our, you know, um, learning platform. So I always do offer students um, the ability to tell me what they feel comfortable talking about. Um, one semester, my students just would not stop talking about the TV show Euphoria. I had never seen it. And so I went and watched it so we could talk about it in class. It's not a reality TV show, but it's on HBO. But every student, that was the TV show they wanted to talk about. So my ideas kind of went out the window a little bit and restructured. And, you know, we used that TV show throughout on the semester. I did not show any clips in class, um, but we, you know, just talked about it. So I kind of just um, gauge kind of the comfort level of my students. Thank you. We have one additional question that just came in. How do you address access to the TV shows for students who may not have streaming services or copyright issues if you show clips if the shows need such access? Oh, that's a great question. So I, um, you know, I'm not asking students to go and watch these shows on their own. Um, I could, I and mean, that's, that's a great, you know, that's a great question. But so I typically am able to find any clips that I want to show on YouTube. Um, you know, I haven't had an, an instance where I haven't been able to, um, but I mean, I feel like you find everything on YouTube, right? Um, you know, something though that when you're using YouTube, of course, though, you can't rely on something the next semester. So just because I was able to find a link to provide to students, um, you know, one semester doesn't mean that that's still going to be available. So, you know, it's just not something that you can like put on a, your your page and then just leave it year to year to year and hope that it still works. So, um, you know, I, I guess because I'm using YouTube, I guess it doesn't follow me for copyright issues. I'm not sure. You know, that's a great question. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I only use services where students can access things freely. So if I could find something like on Canopy that my university library provides for us, um, I would use that. Um, but otherwise I mostly just use YouTube, but that's a great question. Awesome. Thank you. Well, that looks like all the time we have for questions for today. Thank you, Monica, and thank you all for attending today. We will be emailing you a link to view the recording of this webinar once it's available. If you or any of your fellow instructors are interested in presenting for our Learning and Growing webinar series, please, please submit your proposals to the Learning and Growing website, which I'm going to go ahead and link in the chat now for easy access. These free webinars are brought to you by Hawks Learning, an innovative educational coursework company. To learn more about our mastery-based course materials and how Hawks can enhance learning outcomes for you and your students, please visit hawkslearning.com, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you all for attending. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.